Hi, and welcome to Light Readings Leaders in Sustainability. I'm Sue Merrick, and today I'm interviewing Anita Doler, who's the CEO of the Next Generation Mobile Network Alliance, or you may know it as NGMN Alliance. Anita, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Sue, for having me here, and um, yeah, nice to meet you virtually. So tell me, how is NGMN different from other mobile industry uh, groups that we hear about every day? Yeah, so NGMN, Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance, as you already correctly announced, um, was founded um, almost 17 years ago. It's an operator-driven alliance, but in our membership, we embrace not only operators, we also have vendors, we have research institutes, so we work across the uh, value chain together and collaborate on specific topics. Um, another, um, I would say, uh, USP of NGMN, so it's uh, special, is that we work on the requirements level. So we typically work, let's say, in the pre-standardization area. Um, so that's, that was historically where NGMN was always positioned. NGMN, for instance, uh, played a very uh, vital role when the 5G requirements were uh, consolidated. So NGMN submitted the first 5G requirements white paper. Um, and, uh, and here we work on requirements level. However, I would also like to uh, say that um, in the recent past, we started more and more to also embrace topics which are more focused on, um, let's say, immediate um, short term to mid term um, time frames because. Um, of course, we also need to deliver value to the industry and to our members um, for more urgent and short term topics and therefore we embrace a few other items which I'm sure we will um, have a deeper dive later in the interview. Yeah, so maybe you can talk about the main areas of focus right now for NGMN. Yes, so um, we, we started beginning of 21 um, when um, we developed this new strategy of three focus topics and um, the board also approved this and since then we executed. So the first one is um, how to operate disaggregated networks. When we developed the topics, we checked what are the industry's most important challenges and opportunities at the moment and in the future. And also, of course, we checked um, what other organizations are already doing and what is missing uh, with regards to activities in the uh, pre-competitive area. Um, and operating disaggregated networks from an end-to-end -end perspective was not yet covered in any of the other organizations, so that's what we are doing. And uh, we now already started its so-called phase three, what means in simple words that uh, we are uh, developing blueprints with regards to operating models. And of course, um, there is also then a step to check what is already delivered in the industry, where are the gaps and how to close such gaps. Network automation is also part of that first pillar, so how to master this aggregation. And the second big topic is green future networks. Uh, sustainability. Um, here we cover not only network energy efficiency, but also other um, activities and opportunities which support the industry in lowering its own footprint. And of course, it's also known that uh, the mobile uh, industry is also contributing to other industries uh, reducing their carbon footprint. And the third topic is, um, is 6D. Um, 60, of course, naturally is a topic uh, NGMN is already working on since end of 2020. We all know it's very early in the phase, um, but we are the only one global organization operator-driven working on 60 requirements already now. And we started with um, elaborating on the 60 vision and also a drivers for 60. Then uh, we already issued a very high level first um, consolidation of possible use cases. And also especially we looked uh, there into the topic of how those use cases actually differentiate from 5G, mm -hmm. uh, which can be delivered with um, the full potential of 5G. 
And uh, beginning of this year, uh, we issued uh, 60 requirements and first design considerations. And now going forward, we will go into deeper dives with regards to 60 requirements. And you can expect NGMN, of course, also deliver position statements and um, additional submissions to the industry where we also invite the entire value chain to collaborate with us. Those are big topics, disaggregation, sustainability, and 6G. Those are the three main focus areas, very big topics for the industry. So can you explain kind of the concept of green future networks? Uh, we hear a lot about, you know, these goals, um, but why is this so critical for the wireless industry? Yeah, so I mean, first of all, of course, it's a very important topic in general for the societies at large. Um, so we do have also the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, and of course, all this contributes there. Societies are looking into um, how to reduce their carbon footprint emissions in general, greenhouse um, emissions. And um, the mobile telecommunication industry, of course, um, contributes to lowering them by contributing um, other industries, lowering them. But we need also, of course, to look into our own um, value chain. And um, another imperative is especially going forward with 6G and expecting an ever increasing um, volume in data and um, general traffic. Of course, we need also to work um, even harder on lowering in general the energy consumption in our networks. And uh, why is it so important to collaborate there? In NGMN, we have around 80 companies globally, um, operators, uh, vendors, and research institutes. And um, we don't think that such a task can be done in isolation. So collaboration is really key here. And um, if you look, for instance, on some um, um, facts and figures, then uh, for operators who already completely embraced um, completely embraced renewable energy sources, the supply chain, so the so-called scope three, uh, makes around 80% of their carbon emissions. And uh, here we looked into, for instance, providing checklists um, for a circular economy supply chain criteria. Um, and this is very um, a very practical example because it can be downloaded from our web page and can be used by, by every company across the globe, of course. Um, we also delivered, for instance, um, some um, um, first contributions with regards to KPIs. Um, so one conclusion was so how to how to make it measurable where we are with regards to carbon emissions and also energy efficiency. And KPIs naturally embrace um, sustainability KPIs, then also network energy uh, KPIs. And one conclusion was that when we measure the um, energy consumption or how green a network is with regards to energy efficiency, then of course it always needs to be linked to the quality of experience because otherwise we probably will not get um, um, consumers accepting it um, and also for operators it would be a much harder exercise to uh, go that route. So we need still ensure that the users, the end users benefit and also receive a decent service in the networks. Um, then another big topic is their yeah, collaboration also is extremely imperative is um, how to, to develop methods, how to measure the end-to-end -end footprint um, of a service. So we have some countries which are already, uh, where it's already required by legislation to mention to the end user how much carbon emissions, um, for instance, are used when the user is using a specific application or a specific service. And this is extremely difficult to, to calculate because um, at the end of the day, we would need to start with the depletion of materials needed for the network um, elements, which are contributing to provisioning of the service. Um, so there is um, much more to do than actually just to look to, into energy efficiency. Um, and um, in general, the industry, of course, is very keen to also 
uh, contribute to the general reduction of carbon emissions across the entire value chain. Um, for instance, the impact on land and water resource, resource, uh, sources when materials needed for uh, smartphones or for network in infrastructure are uh, depleted in the different um, yeah, countries. Um, so this is this is a very wide area um, Green Future Networks is tackling, but of course we funneled it into different uh, projects. So we had a project on the eco-design of products, on the end-to-end -end, um, environmental um, um, footprint reduction. Um, we um, now are looking into a circular economy requirements. We look further into energy efficiency uh, measures, so especially also going forward with 60, um, and we provide the industry with a roadmap. So I think from a pure pragmatic point of view, um, what we are doing in Green Future Networks is we look into measures which can be applied more or less immediately. So those are process changes or, um, for instance, um, imperative improvements in engineering, uh, when it comes to base stations, when it comes to just shortening cables, for instance, um, in the distribution of direct current um, in the uh, base station equipment. Um, and then up to longer term measures, a real innovation, uh, for instance, um, um, reprogrammable intelligence surfaces, but also dynamic um, 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 massive dynamic MIMO. Um, and so on and so forth. And um, looking forward um, in 60, um, it's, it will be an, a very important topic. And we believe, we strongly believe that sustainability needs to be considered from the very start of designing 60 going forward. So, yeah, that was my next question because you talked about um, increasing data traffic and you know, all this, the increasing usage of the networks. And then when we move to 6G, how how do operators, you know, is 6G going to help operators with those sustainability goals? Or that's what you're trying to kind of build into the standard from the very beginning, it sounds like. Yeah. So um, just to reemphasize, um, we are not developing the standards themselves, but uh, we are um, consolidating requirements already at very early stage, and uh, those requirements contribute to the standardization roadmap. Then. Right. And um, I think one, one important point is that, um, of course, innovation plays an extreme uh, role here as well. Um, and I'm personally a strong believer in innovation because um, there will be, if there is a need, I think there will be also enough creativity um, to um, apply methods with regards to reducing energy consumption of uh, specific um, elements in the network. And um, so, for instance, it should be also um, harmonized um, how the energy consumption across the networks is measured. So we will also look into the um, energy consumption and the standardization of uh, metering um, measures when it comes to disaggregated networks. Yeah, at the moment, it's it's pretty hard to measure the total energy consumption um, because uh, different methods are applied and different um, um, metering methods are used in the industry. So that's, that's another very important topic going forward, being it for 5G or 6G, uh, because this aggregation will, of course, span between 5G and paved the way also then to 6G. Our strong belief is that 6G will be built upon disaggregated networks and uh, software-driven networks. Network automation, so artificial intelligence helping um, to better understand the um, traffic, the load situation of specific um, sites, and also to adjust, of course, dynamically um, the use of network equipment. And um, most important, as mentioned at, um, at the beginning, this also, of course, must be performed in a way which is not um, damaging the quality of experience at the end user side. 
Well, thank you, Anita, for talking to me today. This is a very complicated subject and there's lots of work to be done. Maybe you can summarize um, the top priorities that NGMN has around sustainability. Yes, this pleasure. Thank you, Sue. So the first one is, of course, that it's already imperative now with 5G is network energy efficiency. We need to further get the um, um, consumption of um, energy in the networks um, end to end, of course, including the, the uh, end devices further down. So that's, that's clear and we will continue to work on network energy efficiency items. The other big topic is how to ensure a standardized and harmonized metering. And here uh, we will also contribute to coordinate this um, with regards to achieving a harmonized uh, meter, metering um, standards and architecture landscape. Um, the other big topic is um, how to measure where actually networks stand with regards to their greenness and sustainability. And here, uh, so we already issued uh, recommendations how to measure uh, with regards to KPIs, tackling sustainability uh, metrics, but also um, um, power consumption, so network energy efficiency metrics. And our strong recommendation is to combine those with the quality of experience at the end user side. Um, and then the last big part is uh, the general reduction of a carbon footprint across the entire value chain, so the so-called scope three, and how to achieve an even uh, better and improved eco-design of products with regards to recyclability, um, lowering the use of critical materials for equipment, uh, lowering the negative impact on resources like land and water. So I think those are the main topics, um, not only network energy efficiency, but also other measures contributing to the reduction of carbon footprint. Great. Thank you for summarizing that. And thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Sue. Thanks. Bye.